everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I am reporting live from the waterfall. So if you hear water in the background, that's what that is. And I'm super excited to talk to you about... Um, a lot of people message me and they ask me, how do I find the love of my life? How do I find my twin flame? How do I find my soulmate? Uh, and and then if you do find what you consider this, it's like, how do I keep them? I keep having problems. What's going on? Why are they not the person that I thought they were? And why are they not the person I manifested on my 10-step list? So that's what we're going to chat about today because this is like a common thing. Also, my feet are holding the podcast stand, which Faraday says is not a very good idea. Uh, so if it falls randomly, you'll know why. <laughs> Precarious situation at the waterfall. I live dangerously. I live on the wild side. <sighs> I invite you to take a deep breath and we will get started. So, you know... The answer to this is one that um, might feel obvious to some or too simple to others. Uh, but this is what works. This is what works for me. This is what's worked for my friends who have found very deep love. And I feel like this is the secret sauce. So the secret sauce is to fully commit to your timeline so like you need to do some self investigation like are you living the life that is following your passion following your joy are you in your the best of your ability in alignment with who you feel is your authentic self in the timeline because whoever you are like your true vibration is the most pure vibration that will attract in someone who has a matching vibration. So someone who you actually want, someone that you will be very happy with in your life. And if you are putting masks on, if you're people pleasing, if you're living a life that is not in alignment, like you have a job that you don't love and you're living in a place you don't love, whatever it is, like in some way you are not following your joy. That lowers your vibration and that means that your core vibration is not being sent out, your true vibration. And so what you end up doing is you're attracting in people who match this lower vibration. And this is like vibrations, like judgment ma val value, like fuck that. It's not that's it's not like something someone's better or worse than you. It just means like they, they just imagine everyone is like playing this game of the adventure of life. If you are on the adventure that you are meant to be on, then you will find people who are also on the adventure, like going side by side with you on your path. If you're going down an adventure that is actually not your path because you can tell because you don't you're not feeling excited about it, it's not your passion. It doesn't give you like this like if you are on path, you will feel it because you will feel fully alive. You will be excited to wake up every day. And it's not it's not that you're not going to have bad days, quote unquote bad days or feel sad. It's just that you will feel that life is giving back to you energy because you're so excited with what you do. Like when I'm, when I'm doing coaching, when I'm doing sessions, human design readings, when I'm hosting play parties, I, of course it, it, I'm giving energy, but it gives me so much energy. Of course there's an energy exchange of money, but like in general, I feel like I am on path with creating safe spaces, helping people to, um, identify their authentic self through giving them tools and resources and connecting them to their higher self. Um, and this gives me energy and it, it, it gives me the, it, it aligns with my core vibration and it helps me to admit, like give off my core vibration more powerfully <laughs> uh, so that other people who resonate are on the same similar resonance with this core vibration can find me. 
and this is friend this is any tor- type of relationship so this is friendships this is soul family and also this is romantic relationships this is love you know um and yeah i just find that a lot of people are like this is this is not who i actually want i'm like but this is what you're attracting in because this is the life that you are living that is on this vibration that attracts in this person you know like it all kind of like when you look at it from a very analytical logical sense it's like it all kind of makes sense and adds up and i've always found that the people that are resonating with me and that i'm in love with i am fully in my power doing my thing and they just flow into that vortex like when i met faraday he came to my play party so he the first time he really saw me in real the first time he saw me in real life i think he came to a cuddle event that i organized and then he came to the play party the next weekend and he was just like whoa the fuck this is this like he told me later that he was just in awe of my vibration me being in my power like the spaces that i was hold, holding and yeah he this it resonated with him and the frequency that he was on and i had another this is very this is very normal for me. i had another boyfriend that i when i had my co-living travel company where um he came on he came on the he was a participant. He was a friend of one of the other founders, uh, but he came on as a participant, and she even told me ahead of time, I feel like you guys would vibe. Like, you seem very similar to me. Um, but I was, quote-unquote, working. I mean, we're all the same age. I was, like, 24, maybe. Yeah, I was 25 or something, and he's the same age as me, but I was just like, I'm working. I'm holding the space, so I don't, I can't date any of my clients, you know, the people who are here. Uh, and so I kind of just avoided him. Like we lived in this mansion and what we would do with, with, would be, we would like rent out a beautiful place in a country, around, like a different country around the world every month. And so in this, this month we were in Sicily um, and we had rented out this really beautiful mansion right next to this, the capital Catania. And there was probably 25 of us, 30. It was a very big house. Uh, also randomly had very bad (laughs) wi-fi the girl who picked we took turns picking the locations and she was italian one of the other founders and she was supposed to pick this location and she really fucked up that's a whole other story um so anyways i was helping run this location with the italian girl and he was one of the participants and he was like a boxer so he offered like boxing exercise sessions in the morning and i joined that and that was the first time I talked to him. We, were, we lived there for a month together. So this was maybe two weeks in. I joined this boxing exercise session in the morning. And he told me later, he was like, I thought you really didn't like me because when I would come into a room, you would like leave the room. And I told him, oh, no, it's because I actually really like you. And I don't know what to do. And I get kind of shy when I actually like someone. So I just run away. And also I'm like working. And so I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do. And he was like, oh, OK. <laughs> Uh, and then we ended up going out dancing with the whole group and him and I just connected because we both really love dancing. And then we ended up going on a date and I, he asked me, I said, I think I just randomly asked him, when is your birthday? And he was like, October 29th. And I just froze. I was like, which year? And he told me the year. And I was like, how do we have, I was like, we have the same birthday, month, day and year. So talk about resonance. Like we were literally, he was born in Turkey. We grew up in London, but I, and I was born in California. And we even like, he called his mom and she was like, I think he was born sometime in the morning. And like, I was born at this time. Like we basically were probably born within like, I think, I mean, I think he was born like two hours ahead of me. I'm trying to do time zone differences right now, which is not working while I'm (laughs) recording this. But basically, we were born almost at the exact same time. So this is just another story to show you resonance. And him and I ended up dating and traveling around the whole world, literally like all the way around the world um, and having a very beautiful love story. Um, So this is what I'm trying to tell you is like when you are doing the thing that you love, uh, it's like you give off this it's like this extra spiciness like that's what passion is it's like this zest of life and when you're just fully in that like 
everything that you want, desire, need comes to you. You know, like you don't have to worry about anything. And something else I really want to talk about is right now in the world, there is a, a very big thing happening called forced resonance. So on a mass consciousness level, like as a whole population of society worldwide, there is a vibration that's being set through mass media, so the news, the media, um, governments, and this is a vibration of fear. So this is like very much like stay in your place, you know, follow the rules. Like it's like this vibration of like you better comply and there's things to be in fear of. And when the, the biggest way to disempower us and to power us, disempower us is through fear. So as especially if you are a light worker, which many of you who are listening to this are like someone who you recognize you have spiritual abilities. We all have psychic abilities, but you're actively like working with your spirituality to uncover these and you would love to help the collective with these. Um, if you're one of these, it's very important that you consciously recognize that the world is trying to force you into a vibration that is one of fear. And once you're consciously aware of this, all you have to do is tell yourself, I choose to be in my own vibration. I choose to admit my own vibration. So create an energy bubble for you every morning. And the way to reinforce this energy bubble is to always have times every day, even if it's just 15 minutes, where you are meditating, you are somehow, use babe, you're naked behind me. You are connecting to yourself. You're connecting to your higher self. This could be journaling, exercising, you know, being in nature. Um, but for me, it's really breath work, breath work and meditation. I, I use a YouTube channel. It's free called DMT, DMT breath work. Well, no, no, no. It's called breath work beats, breath work beats. Uh, this is not a sponsored you know, plug. I'm just letting you know that's what I use. They have like 10 minute long videos of uh, like the um, breath work that you can, breath work sessions, <laughs> my words, breath work sessions that you can use. Um, and that really helps me to get into a meditative zone. And then I usually meditate for like a half an hour. That's me. I don't think everyone needs to do this. Um, and I also really love to do rape when I'm in this, once I'm already in this meditative state. Um, and then also being in nature, being in nature definitely helps you reconnect to your core resonance and your core vibration. Uh, it just helps to amplify it, reinforce it. So when you're in nature, what you can do is like, imagine your, um, your solar plexus as like basically your stomach as this ball of light. And it's like the ball of light is getting bigger and it expands and it's absorbing like it's taking in all of this yummy energy that is nature, that is our home vibration, because we are nature. So um, I've been, yeah, I've been watching some stuff on Twin Flames and stuff like this. And for me, Twin Flames is, I made a whole other podcast about how to find your Twin Flames. So you can look that up if you're interested in that. But briefly, I just really believe that Twin Flame is someone who is part of our higher your our over soul like the higher version of us like our soul family up in spirit and they they've come down and they're like part of our soul like the bigger part of our soul and they come down here to also work out their own stuff uh, and be these reflections for us so we can choose to let it be someone who is mirroring us so hardcore that we are stepping into our power even more but that be like mirroring us can also be sometimes really painful because it's very triggering to have your traumas mirrored, to have your, you know, your shadow, the things that you don't like looking at about yourself, the things that you're ashamed of or embarrassed about, like the things you need to work on, right? To be more fully integrated, they will mirror this too. This is what Faraday and I do for each other all the time. And there's been times where sometimes it's like too intense. I'm like, just like, oh, I just want to, I just want to be, I just want to break. I just, I don't want things to be so serious. And then I realized that he's the one who's like, you're the one making it serious. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, this is what I mean by mirroring, because sometimes we project it onto each other. So anyways, twin flames, that's an amazing thing. But to find your twin flame, like for me, I was fully in my power, fully emitting my vibration, fully in my connection to source and and just like vibing with life. Like I was like, if I find a partner, if I find, if, if it happens, the thing is that you don't need to find anything. If you're on a vibration that is, that is your core frequency, everything, everything just comes to you. So again, with Ferdy, he just, he just came into my life. I didn't search for him somewhere. I wasn't like looking for him under a rock or something, you know, like, or up in a mountain. He would probably be mostly up in a mountain. He wouldn't be in a cave. He'd be up on top of a mountain. <laughs> but um, I didn't need to do any of those things because he just came into my timeline. And even after he came in, I wasn't sure if it was him because, um, you know, it took him about, or it took, we met in April. It took about six months for him to ask me on a date from when we first met. And that's cool. That's also, like he said, he spent a lot of that time like subconsciously getting ready for me and uh, putting himself more into a fully integrated state because just by being in the, my vibration, he was already getting mirrored a lot of things that he needed to integrate. And so he like was like doing that. And I didn't know that at the time. I just thought, I was just like, I feel this very strong connection with him, but he keeps running away from me. <laughs> but he's also being really nice. But it's like, it was like a lot of mixed messages coming my way. And I, the way that I dealt with that was I just stayed fully in my grounded place and in my center. And I was like, okay, if he sees it, then he sees it. I see it. I see the potential for us to have this beautiful par partnership. If he's not ready for this or if he doesn't see this, okay, then that's the timeline. I'm not going to push someone, like if they're not ready and they're not fully on board, then like that's the only way it's going to work is if full, both people, like you can't push someone to have a relationship with you. Those people that are like chasing after people, kind of stalkerish like that are like, I see us being together. Don't be one of those persons. Like that's not sexy. They like stay in your power, stay in your groundedness, understand that you are the fucking best thing ever because you are your most authentic self. You are the only vibration out there that is you because you are uniquely you. And that is so special. There's very few people who are brave enough to be their authentic selves right now in the timeline. And that because of that, it is so attractive. And so... I found that once I was able to be fully in my power, and for me, it was like feeling safe. I have always been my authentic self, but the feeling safe to let people know that and to share that was something that I took my journey on because because of many things. But I got there, and when I got there, I realized that, wow, I have... I had a lot of energy coming at me of men, women that wanted to date me. And so for me, it was more like being very connected to my core frequency and choosing to like picking someone who I felt aligned with my core frequency. Like Faraday and I are actually very different in a lot of ways, but our core frequency is the same. Like at the core of both of us we are these little inner kids that just are so joyful and we just want to play and be in nature and get dirty and messy and not care and just like vibe and that's just who we are and like create beautiful things in the world this is who we are we are creators we love to create ev like things spaces projects whatever like we love creating and we love doing this together now so um, I hope this helps. Uh, I, I know that when I read some stuff like this, for me, I read a lot. So a lot of this information I initially read, like through piecing together many different things and then like real, like practicing it, like making it a way of my life. And that is something that now I embody. So this is the thing is like, you can mentally, understand all of this but it needs to be in your body it needs to be in the frequency that you are giving off because if you're like in your head like 
I'm amazing. Like I'm so beautiful. I, I love myself, but the deeper belief, like the supporting belief that is below the surface is that you don't love yourself or you don't think you're amazing or you don't think you're worthy, then you are going to search for external validation to fill that need. And that's what you're going to look for in a partner instead of looking for someone who, or being open to someone coming in who already is complete. When you are complete within yourself, when you feel complete, when you're on a vibration of I am complete, I am enough, I trust the timeline, I trust who I am in the time, I know who, like my path, I'm, well, it's like, I trust that I will figure out my path every step of the way, like step by step. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but you're in the full trust of that exploration and following your joy to figure out what it is. Then you will attract in someone who also matches that, that vibration of I feel complete, I'm on my path, I'm following my passion. Um, and if you, <laughs> the second part is that when you find, when this person and you find each other, uh, a lot of people, um, they don't like talking about what happens after because there's so much in society of like the Cinderella story, like you find your prince and princess and you just like ride off into the sunset together and everything's amazing and no one wants to talk about it if it's not because we want to keep this image that everything's perfect and like fuck that like relationships are facing your stuff together facing hard things in life together challenges past traumas negative beliefs together and supporting each other holding your vibration of completeness while the other one opens a negative belief or opens a trauma and goes into it and heals it or you know like when one of you has a very negative external experience, the other person holding the safe, grounded space of energy so that it doesn't become traumatic for your partner. You know, like you hold the groundedness, you take turns holding this groundedness as you go through life together. So it's like you get on this roller coaster of an adventure together and you're just like, ah, this is great. Oh no, this is not great. Oh, this is great. You know, it's like, but you just know you're in it together. And I think this is um, what I would like to shift in the collective is that once you f find your soulmate and your twin flame, that everything's amazing. The first year after Ferdy and I got together, it was fucking hard. Like there were so many times where we almost broke up and we even said it out loud. I mean, Ferdy said this more than me, but he was like, I just know that if we break up, we're going to come back together. So like, why even go through that? Why don't we just work this out? Like he really held this secure foundation of partnership. I have had a lot of heartache in my life. So I was more of the, the one who was, I guess, avoidant emotionally where I was just like, nope, it's not going to work. We need to break up. I need to, I need to separate because I don't feel safe. Um, safety was this thing that was very important for me. Oh my god, there is a mosquito in my boob. <sighs> okay, I got it out. I think it just flew away. <laughs> um, and so I think this is the thing that I really want to highlight is like, this is when the real work begins. It's like you have a partner that knows you and knows your authentic self and you stay in your power and your grounded place. And it's also okay to lose that grounding sometimes in order to grow, in order to go deep in your emotions. If you're if you're facing a negative belief that you really want to release, facing a trauma that you would like to release, knowing that your partner has your back, like they're holding this grounded vibration so that you can go through it. And they're like, Hey, it's okay. I'm like, I'm here when you come out of it. Like I'm here the whole time. I'm here energetically and emotionally connected to you while you go through this experience. And of course you also go through things together that is like really intense and powerful and you navigate that together. But I find that, um, I remember my godfather said one time, the key to a successful relationship is that one person is good all the time because if both of you are down at the same time, it can be very hard to keep this grounded vibration of everything's okay. But if one of you is going through the chaos or going through some sort of negativity and the other one can hold the groundedness, like it's almost like one person goes into their higher self of like the knowingness and everything's okay while the other person can be um, 
you know, just in their physical mind for a while. So it's, I just, I, I, you can say in very many different illustrations in many different ways, but what I'm trying to say is this is the work. This is the work to, towards even more fuller integration because we can only do so much integration by ourselves. We need external reflections in order to become fully, fully integrated as humans. And it's beautiful, especially when we are in a partnership that is supportive and safe. And in order to be that, to be in that partnership, you need to be your authentic self. Because if you are faking who you are in some way, you're going to attract someone in. And then there's going to be a moment, like they're going to they're gonna be attracted to that, that mask that you put on. And there's going to be a moment where you need to take the mask off because now you need to work through th- some shit or you go through a hard time and you can't keep the mask on anymore. And then they're going to be like, this is not who I thought you were, you know? And then you're going to have to say, yeah, this is actually who I am, you know? Or some people just get triggered and run away from that. And then there's this other part where it's like, yes, you accept each other for who you are right now, but is it okay to grow within the dynamic? This is like a key thing, I think, for lasting, amazing relationships is the ability to change within the dynamic and for the other partner to honor that and hold space for it. Verdi and I have changed so much in the year and a half that we have been dating in the two years that we've known each other. Um, and sometimes we both joke about it with each other. Like, remember when you used to believe this? Remember when you used to act like this? And then we just laugh about it. But for other people, I know this might be a triggering thing. So it's like sometimes, like Faraday's always reminding me this, You got to really laugh. If you're going to be in a long-term relationship, you cannot take things so seriously. It cannot be a battle all the time. It needs to be, we are in partnership and everything at the end of the day is okay. And we can just laugh about it. It's just a funny joke, you know, because really we are just dreaming this, this timeline, this life that we are in is we are a soul. We are a spiritual creature having a very temporary physical experience. None of this should be taken seriously. And I say that, and I'm one of the most serious people out there. (laughs) So I'm saying this also to myself. But I'm just saying that this is very important for us to be able to get through and also enjoy it. We're here to enjoy the timeline. So I hope that these helped. And I am sending you guys all lots of love. The bugs here are getting very loud suddenly. And... I'm going to go do some meditation and jump in the water. So that's me. Um, I'm starting to open myself to online human design readings and sessions. And right now I'm charging 111 euros for a session. So if you're interested in this, you can reach out to me on Instagram. So many of you have said that you are interested in, in like like doing online sessions. And while it was high season here on Kopayang, I was so busy with play play parties and in-person sessions that I didn't have space. Now I have space. Things are quieting down. I'm very happy for that. And also I'm excited to connect with a lot of you. I did a couple sessions recently online and I really, really enjoyed it. And I feel like it was very impactful for the people because a lot of you are very alone where you are and you're not alone. We're in this together. So it's really important that we keep connecting to each other and keep up leveling and giving each other tools so that we can keep going. And oh, one more thing I wanted to say was um, I'm going to start doing like questions from listeners at the end of every podcast. So if you have a question on relationships, sex, you know, love, orgasm, pleasure, these are subjects I love talking about. Feel free to send me a voice message on um, Instagram and I, you can just keep it anonymous and I'll just play it on the podcast and then live respond and I think this is really fun I've had other people do this on their podcast and I just find it really interesting to hear it directly from the person and hear their vibration and then me respond it's like a radio show I love this stuff so yeah Uh, send me a voice message of any questions you have and I hope you have an amazing day go out in nature It's, it's so important for us to connect to nature and yeah Brittany Bond reporting live sending you guys all lots of love bye